well, I made my way to my favorite example. You don't have to raise your hand, but if you can, if you if you raise it, I, I'll feel good about myself. How many people know Ayatul Kursi? Ayatul Kursi. The last example of the evening I want to share with you is Ayatul Kursi. Okay, we're going to recite it together. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Lahu ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'ithnih. Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Wa la yuhitoona bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bima sha'a. Wasi'a kursiyuhu al-samawati wal ard. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Ayatul Kursi is made up of nine sentences. Ayatul Kursi has nine sentences. I'll walk you through them. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. Number one. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Number two. Lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Number three. What's number four? Man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi... إذنه. That's number four. يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم. Number five. Then. ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه. إل إلا بما شاء. Number six. Then. وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض. Number seven. ولا يؤده حفظهما. Number eight. وهو العلي العظيم. Number nine. Nine sentences. The first sentence is Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum It's a beautiful sentence which ends with two of Allah's names What are those two names? Al-hayy al-qayyum The living and the source of all establishment Everything stands and exists and is maintained because of Allah What's incredible is that the last sentence Sentence number one has something in common with sentence number nine Which is وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ ال Azim. How many names of Allah in the, in the last sentence? Two names of Allah in the first sentence, two names of Allah in the last sentence. Okay. What's the second sentence? Before I go to the second sentence, let me tell you something about security. Security guards have a very hard job. They have, you see those British guys that wear the funny hats at the towers? <laughs> that can't smirk? That's a hard job. And one of the best jobs for college students. <laughs> but if you get a secure, you know, if you're in security, you have to stand, sit in your booth, you have to stare at the CCTV for hours and hours. And does it move? It's the same picture. And you have to look at it for 12 hours, 8 hours. It's the most exciting thing you've ever done in your life. What tends to happen when you're guarding something? You tend to get sleepy, you tend to get tired when you're guarding something. You tend to you, you so you'll see. In, of course, you don't watch movies because you're very religious. But you know, but in movies they have these things called movies, and then sometimes they have a they have an action movie, and the the guy is trying to get inside a place, but it has a security guard. But the security guard is so he grabs him, you know, and he gets inside because the guy's getting the security guard's getting sleepy. You understand? Okay. Allah Azza wa Jal says about Himself, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. Drowsiness. Drowsiness happens when you're tired. Your eyes start kind of closing a little bit. You're not sleeping, but you're kind of half sleeping, like that guy over there. <laughs> I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but you're half sleeping. That's that's sina. And of course, what happens after that? What's the next step? Nawm. First comes Sina. Sina is like, you know, when, when you go to Jumu'ah and the khatib says, Inna alhamdulillah, alladhi nahmaduhu Like that's Sina. Okay? By the time he gets to, Ayyuha al-ikhwatul kiram. That's, that's Naum. Okay? <laughs> that's Naum. Okay, so you know the difference between Sina and Naum. Drowsiness and then sleep. Okay. This is the second sentence. The second sentence is, these are things that creation has. Creation gets tired and it starts getting drowsy and eventually it falls to sleep. You know? Or sometimes you tell yourself, no, 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 I'm just closing my eyes but I'm not sleeping. 
Okay, let me just close my eyes for a second. You're gone. You're finished. Okay? Now here's the thing. I know something about Sina and Noom because I'm a teacher by profession. Right? So, <laughs> being a teacher is all, you might as well do a, you know, a PhD in sleep sciences or sleep, sleep studies because you see students like, you know how you, people check out of a hotel? You can see their brains checking out. Like, <laughs> in the middle of a lecture, like. <laughs> it's the best. This is the second sentence about sleep, about exhaustion and sleep, drowsiness and sleep. What was the second last sentence? Wala yauduhu hifduhuma. Guarding the skies and the earth does not exhaust Allah. When someone's exhausted, what do they get? Sina and Noam. The second sentence is actually connected to the. Second last sentence. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم ولا يأوده حفظهما. He says له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. He owns whatever is in the sky and the earth. Now, before I tell you further, you need to understand the difference between two words, two names of Allah, Malik and Malik. Two names of Allah, Malik and Malik. I hope I can explain this difference to you because it will make you appreciate these ayat like nothing else. Malik is an owner. Malik is an owner. Malik, I already told you today, what is Malik? King. king. Is there a difference between a king and an owner? Yes. You are the owner of your pen, but you do not say, I am the royal sovereign of this ink pen. <laughs> you don't do that. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You understand? Owners can be of small things. You can own a car, you can own a computer, you can own a phone, but you don't, you're not going to be the king of it. Kingdom is used for big things. Here's another problem. Ownership, ownership is about property. It's about property. But kingdom is not about, you know, you're not a, the king over a tree or the king over a piece of land. You're the king over the people who live in that land. Kingdom is about controlling people. Ownership is about controlling objects. It's a difference. Now Allah says, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ He owns whatever is in the skies and the earth. What is the ayah about? Ownership. The ayah is about? Ownership. And ownership, one thing about ownership, it's micro. So every single thing is owned by Allah. Okay. What's the third last sentence? Anyone remember? وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ His throne extends to the skies and the earth. When Allah talks about His throne, He's talking about His kingdom. One dimension of control is ownership. The other dimension is kingdom. Both completing the picture. Because if you're just an owner, you're not a king. And if you're just a king, you're not an Oh, and by the way, let me tell you the difference also. Nowadays in some countries we have kings. You can be the king of an island. But does that mean you own everything in that island? No. Allah is the owner of all things and the king of all things. This is, both of them are necessary. Just because you own, and by the way, it could be that somebody owns all the property, but they're not the king. Is that possible? They own the property, but the king is someone else. So they have property ownership, but somebody else has authority. Or somebody has authority and no property ownership. But Allah has, Allah is Malik and He is Malik. The Malik part of Allah's attribute, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Third sentence. The king, kingdom of Allah, وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Okay. What's the fourth sentence? Let's go back. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Lahu ma fi al-samawati wa ma fi al-ard. What's next? Man dhal ladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi idnihi. Let's understand this ayah first. Who will come and make shafa'a with Allah except unless he gives permission? In other words, what is shafa'a? Shafa'a, if you don't understand the concept, because we use big English words like intercession. But let's make it simple. Shafa'a means you got connections. Shafa'a means that you were about to lose your job, but your uncle is the manager and he came and said, no, 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 he's, he's, he's with me. Okay, balo. He's good. 
That's shafa'a. On judgment day, we are in trouble possibly, and then somebody comes and says, no, 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 they're, they're, they're with me. They're with me. Go easy on them, please. We beg Allah Azza wa Jal to qualify us for the shafa'a of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, nobody will come for you. Your uncle, your cousin, your dad, your mom, your boss. You're not going to come for you on judgment day. <laughs> yeah, Allah, actually, he's... he's Not gonna happen on that day. We're good. You know, nowadays you can do that. They're with me, VIP pass, so you can go inside. No, 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 not over there. There's no VIP ticket. Except, the only exception is if Allah gives permission. So this ayah is about nobody having any authority unless Allah gives it to them. Nobody will have any authority and the only exception, and the word exception is important, the exception is if Allah gives it to them. You clear about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They know nothing, they can control, they have in, they encircle nothing of his knowledge. Illa except Bimasha. The fourth sentence and the sixth sentence are both about a statement about Allah and the only exception. The statement was, nobody has authority to make a case except whoever Allah gives permission. They have no knowledge except, except whoever He wants to give knowledge to. Otherwise they know nothing. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ The two, fourth and the sixth sentence are correlated. The first and the ninth, the second and the eighth, the third and the seventh, the fourth and the sixth. What's left? Rafi. Middle sentence? Yes. He says, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Oh my God, he says he knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them. Hmm. As though, and he knew what is coming ahead in the ayah and what was yeah. behind in the ayah. He put the, be and the, in the middle of it is, I know what's ahead and I know what's behind. Who speaks like that? Who speaks like that? SubhanAllah. The way in which Allah talks, the way in which Allah delivered this speech, and I want you to be cognizant of a fact. The fact is we now read the Qur'an as a book. We read it as a text. We say sentence number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did the Sahaba do that? Did the Rasul himself, sallallahu alayhi wa says, look at sentence number one and sentence number nine and two and eight and three and seven. No, because he was just what? Speaking. He was speaking the Qur'an. We are able to see these things when they're put in writing. The Qur'an was so perfect when he was, it was being given in speech. And which has more possibility of mistake? When you write something or when you say something? Oh man, when you say something, it's hard to take it back. Especially if it's on YouTube. <laughs> That's hard. But if you're writing a nasty email, then you can, before you hit sense, erase that and just say Eid Mubarak and then send it. <laughs> like, yeah. You have a chance to take it back. But when, you are, when you're saying something, it's done. There's no room to edit. There's no room to fix. Allah Azza wa revealed this Qur'an not in writing. He revealed it in speech. He revealed it in speech. You know, I've sat with linguists, non-Muslim linguists, and I've shared some of these things with them. And they refuse to believe that the Qur'an is spoken. They refuse to believe it. They say it has to be written. It can't be spoken. I was like, you're right, it is written, just not in this world. It is written. You know, it's filawah and mahfuz. It is written. But it was given to Rasul as speech. So it would become very clear to anybody who listens, this cannot be from a human being. 